Greetings in Jesus' name. My name is Pastor Nathan from Oasis of Life. I would like to greet you in your homes, from my home to yours, this afternoon hour on this Ascension Day. Just want to thank you for tuning in and being a part of our home. And, uh, you know, uh, it's hard that we are in our homes and we have to uh, actually speak about the ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, like my wife did the presentation this morning, I want to just uh, encourage you and speak a few truths this morning, uh, this evening, about the ascension. Well, the ascension is actually a rising frequent applied to the visible elevation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to heaven. But I want to bring some truths to your, your sight this afternoon about the words of Jesus Christ in John chapter 14 and verse number 2. Jesus actually says in this verse, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go there to prepare a place for you. Now Jesus actually makes known to his disciples that he is going to his father's house and there are many mansions up there and when he goes there he will prepare a place there for you and if it were not so he would have told us so we as Christians today have to understand that Jesus has given us a promise a promise that we will not always be on earth that we will be in heaven once we live a God-fearing and a righteous life we will make it to heaven. And he says that in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, which means in Numbers 23 verse 19, it says that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he born of man that he should repent. If he says something, has he not made it good? So the fact of the matter is, if Jesus was lying, he says that if it were not so, I would have told you. If I was just keeping you on a string, I would have told you. But I'm telling you the truth, because I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, I go to prepare a place there for you. So if you are righteous on this ascension day, Jesus actually is telling us he's going away. But he's just not going away. He's making a place, he's creating an environment for the righteous of God, righteousness of God. So I would say to you today, in this lockdown, when we are in our homes, and when we are looking around our environment, how are we ready if Jesus had to come again? It's 2000 years plus and we seem to be celebrating and enjoying the year after year, speaking about the same things over and over again. But are we ready for his return? And are we prepared to get into a place called heaven? Yes, in verse number 12 of John 14, it says, Verily, very, which means, Shortly, shortly, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, which means you have to believe, dear beloved, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, which means we have to do the same work that he has done. And he says, Also, and great works that these shall he do, which means we should do greater works than what he has done. Because he says, I am going to the Father. He makes mention of this in the book of John. So often we know John to be John the Beloved. And in John 3.16 he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whomsoever believed in him shall not perish. Listen, beloved, we as Christians are not living a life that we are waiting to perish. We are living a life that is going to be for eternal. And I have to tell you today that, uh, you know, we have to get up of our, of our high horses and begin to smell the coffee and understand what is real today. And in John 14, 28, it says, Ye have heard how I said to you. He says, he, keep make, he makes mention of this. I've told you time and time again. I'm going away and I'm going to come again. And if you love me, 
you would rejoice because I said to you, I'm going to the Father, and the Father is greater than me. And Jesus also said in the Gospels that I'm not here about my own works, I'm about the works of my Father. And we as Christians have to know we are about the works of Jesus Christ. And in John chapter 16 and verse number 10, it says, Of righteousness, because I go to the Father, you will see me no more. You see, the Bible says we've got to worship him in spirit and in truth. So God is a spirit and we will become the spirit one day. We will have to give up this life. And ascension is so important to you and I today because Jesus is going to return and he's going to accept those that are in him today. And I say to you, as it says in John 16, 28, I came forth from the Father. Yes, the Bible says in Jeremiah 1, 5, I know you before you can be formed in your mother's womb, which means God predestined you and he knew you. Like Jesus did, he says, I came forth from the Father and I'm come into this world. Listen, God has placed you upon the face of this world. God has placed you here. You didn't just come by your own accord. Yes, we should know that we have come from the Father and come into this world. I will leave this world and go to the Father. Yes, we are bound to return to the Father someday soon. This Ascension Day should make a difference in your life and my life. It's not just a ritual that we are celebrating time and time again. It's not something that we have to face time and time again. And we, got to, we, we, we are not people that are believing in rituals. We believe in the reality and the word is alive and the word will set you free. And that's why we have to come finally to the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8. But he shall receive power. Yes, he says, you shall receive power after which you will become my disciples. You have observed, you have become witnesses, firstly in Jerusalem, Judea, Sumeria. Jesus makes that known to the people. Yes, you and I have to be witnesses today. What have you witnessed? What have I witnessed today? We have to be witnesses. If we are not witnesses, we cannot truly believe that Jesus has ascended. What have you witnessed? What have you seen change? What have you seen turn around in society, in the lives of Christians today? In, in the lives of non-believers becoming Christians today? He says you shall re receive power and after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem. Start here, where you are, wherever you are. Start in your neighborhood becoming witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ. Start in Jerusalem. Don't run away far from where you are. Your neighborhood is your Jerusalem. Your home is your Jerusalem. And Judea, Sumeria, and the uttermost parts. Then you can go to Timbuktu if you want to. But let's start at Jerusalem today. We only will receive power if we believe. And we only can believe if we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And verse number 9 says of Acts 1, he says, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him. Oh, yes. A cloud received him. A whole host of witnesses received him. Out of sight. See, but life is but a vapor, dear beloved. It's here, and it exists. It's only here for a while, and it is gone. I want you to understand this evening as I present to you what Jesus has laid upon my heart about the ascension. It's not a ritual. It's something that we've got to look forward to. And you've got to look forward to changing your atmosphere. Where you are right now is not permanent. Sooner or later you're going to get away from that place. The body is going to die and the spirit is going to be lifted up. So like Jesus Christ was crucified, you also will be crucified. You'll be persecuted for his name's sake. Baptism speaks of metamorphosis, being born again. But I want to tell you something. There's always an ascension awaiting you. How about your ascension? I pray today, even as we speak, in verse number 10, it says, And while they looked steadfastly, the Bible says, God gave angels charge over them. And behold, two men received Jesus Christ. And as he ascended, 
to the height you will become. He will receive you today. He will accept you today. I pray today, even as you, you pray with me today. As you pray with me today, that you'll accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. As you will accept him as your personal Savior, he's risen from the dead. The same way he came, the same way he has been uh, received by the Lord Jesus, uh, by God himself. I pray today, you will not hesitate to know that heaven awaits you. And when he comes back, he will come back in the clouds of glory. The angel said, in the same way that he went up, in the same manner he will come back down. I pray that you will be blessed knowing that the Bible says, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. I pray that you will be blessed this Ascension Day. It doesn't really matter. COVID-19 has no hold over you. It's a temporary thing. Financial situations are just temporary. Whatever you're going through today is just temporary. Let Jesus be your shepherd. Let him be your guide. Let him be your father today. The Bible says in Isaiah 60 in verse 1, Arise and shine for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is upon you. I pray the Lord will be upon you, and he will shine through you today. As we surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ, and we ask for his presence, his hand to be upon us today. Can we bow our heads in prayer and ask God to come into our lives? The Bible says in the book of Romans, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. I don't know where you are right now, but I want to tell you, accept him into your life. Simple as that. Just accept him into your life. Take the first step and he will do the rest. Let's pray. Our most gracious God and eternal Father, it's not by might, nor by power, but by your spirit today that we live. And because you have ascended, even Stephen said, I see the we heavens open up and I see the Son of Man sitting alongside the Father interceding for us. I pray God today, even as you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ on our behalf and he has died on our behalf today, that many souls out there will receive this anointing that is so great that breaks the yoke of bondage. I pray today, even as we come to the evening, we know that you're the God that is of yesterday, you're the God of today, and you're the God of tomorrow. I pray for everybody that has come to hear and listen to your word, that they will be blessed, not because of who we are, it's because of who you are. It's because of who you are that we can be called the righteousness of God. Amen. May God bless you. May God keep you. May His face shine upon you. And may He be your portion all the days of your life, even as you continue through these difficult times. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you this time.